Hi, my name is Kat. I'm a California CPA and in this video I'll show you how to enter Schedule E, a rent for a rental income and expenses in ATX tax software. Let's start. So I found it's not pretty straightforward in ATX how to find schedules. So usually what I do, I go to 1040, first page, and kind of like knowing where schedule um, rental income should go, which is schedule one, line five. I uh, just press on jump to link field and that will take us, it will add a new tax form to add it to the tax return. So let's say, here you go. So we just press add new form. And on the left side, where we have all the forms that are part of the tax return, we'll see entry now for Schedule E for rental income. All right, so let's go. So basically we'll start. So if you do need to check any of things here, we can. Um, I'm just gonna like kind of like, well, for example, fair rental days are important. So let's do, um, I don't know, 265. So it's like partially rental. And then you can enter property type. If it's, let's say it's a single family residence. Uh, personal use days we can enter here as well and here we go uh, so property description the address and city let's say it's first street apartment one and the city is los angeles california oops my bad i missed one zero uh, yeah, we can enter country name if needed, but this is for foreign. Anyways, uh, so here you go. So here, uh, the entry that is in marked in blue, we can just enter it here. Like let's say advertising expenses or insurance. Sorry, insurance was line nine. All other, we kind of have to do the same thing as we did to find schedule E is to jump to link field. So for rental income, we just go here. Oops. And here we have like rents, rents, let's do hundred dollars. We can enter other income, like pretty much anything related that whatever income we can get can be entered here. Let's go back to schedule E. So now what happened to rent income? I think we kind of, uh, so here, that's where we enter payer name. I don't know, payer one and everything else. Ah, oh, still doesn't show up. Let's see. Income, full income, royalties. I'll just pause for a second to double check why it doesn't show up. So I think for this 1099 miscellaneous to show up, you kind of need to enter more information here, like address and everything else. Uh, but there is an easier way. So like, let's say here we have also other income received, but not reported on form 1099 miscellaneous. So the entry to this one is kind of like elsewhere. So I chose, I entered payer, type of income rental, full amount, and now it showed up under our rent received. Uh, so that's kind of like how it's entered. So it's or we enter it on 1099 form received or we enter it for on form 1099 miscellaneous not received. And for expenses, we have line five here, uh, other lines as well. So it's pretty straightforward. If something is marked in uh, like it's in um, we kind of uh, if it's not in blue, it's in yellow. We have to press jump to link fields and enter the information there. Uh, so another things I would like to show you is depreciation because it's it's not straightforward. So for depreciation, I usually press on whatever, whichever line it is on the form and it takes us to all this uh, choices we can make. So we have to uh, add fixed assets. So I have one entered already here. It's for Schedule C. So what I will do, I'll just change it to Schedule E to make it simpler. 
So what I entered here is the asset's name, date of service, if it's a furniture, like let's say I pretended this is a computer and it's 100% used for business, the cost basis is $100, um, $100 and we have recovery of five years. So if I change this to Schedule E, it's supposed to show up on Schedule E under depreciation. Uh, all right, so that's pretty much it. And I think here somewhere we can also enter loss limitation and loss carryovers from prior year. Here you go, loss carryovers. So it has summary of loss carryovers is that we can, I mean, we, we cannot really enter it here, but it's su supposed to show up. So I think it's, it should be elsewhere. Loss limitation. Oh, here you go. Prior year carryovers. And we have a regular AMT and it's eventually will summarize on those loss carryovers schedules. Uh, so yeah, that's how we, uh, there is also like question about 10 and 9s that we have to answer, but if we don't answer it, it will show up under diagnostics. I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much. Bye. I hope you found my video helpful. Uh, if you want to learn more about me and what I do, please go to my website, remotecpainla.com and please subscribe to my channel. It means still a lot to me when people comment or subscribe to my channel. That makes me want to continue and record more videos. Thank you and have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.